session. <laughs> so your library wants to lend iPads. Uh, so just want to take a moment to thank the sponsors and supporters of the Library 2.0 uh, 13 conference. Here they are. So um, one little thing we like to do here at the conference is give everybody a moment to uh, note on the map where they're uh, logging in from. So um, Amy, our moderator, is going to give everybody whiteboard permissions. If you haven't done this before, there'll be a little star icon um, to the left right beside your uh, chat in your main room, and you can indicate on the map some people are already doing it, look at that, indicate on the map where you are. Um, and uh, please post your city, country, time, weather um, into the chat. Ooh, who's near me? Cool and sunny, I hear ya. <laughs> well, it's great to see where everybody's from. Here we are. Your libraries want to lend iPads. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe you're curious. My library wanted to lend iPads. Um, so, as I said, my name is Heather Westhaver. I'm a team leader here at the Burlington Public Library in beautiful Burlington, Ontario, Canada. Um, I'd also like to I'd also like to introduce you all to um, uh, our moderator, Amy Herman. Um, so she'll be helping us out in our chat today. Um, does somebody have a question? Sorry. Karen, I just saw that you put your hand up. Um, so today we will have Q&A at the end of the session because there's a lot of different parts to this that I'm going to talk about. However, um, feel free to put your questions through the chat. I will go back through them um, as we're going along and I will try to um, keep an eye on the chat as will Amy um, and she'll try to make sure that uh, I notice your questions as we go along here um, because I don't think I'll take up the full hour by any means um, with what I have to say to you folks today. So I wanted to give you all a little bit of background um, from where we're coming from. So I thought I'd start with a little bit of information about Burlington Public Library, or as you'll hear me say today, uh, BPL. So Burlington Public Library has seven locations. We have our central branch and then six smaller locations, uh, one of which just opened up this September. We offer services to a community of about 175,000 people. Um, the city is located about 45 minutes outside of Toronto, which is the largest city in Canada. Um, we're also next door to the city of Hamilton, which has a population of about um, 500,000 people. So we service a growing and very prosperous community of commuters, young families, business people, and seniors. So it's very, um, very diverse here um, and very prosperous, I would say, here in Burlington. To give you a little more background regarding why we would have gone into the world of iPad lending, I wanted to talk a bit about where we've gone with technology lending. 
Um, before we started lending iPads, we've had some other technologies come across our desk. It started out with pedometers, to be, uh, to be blunt. BPL has been lending pedometers for about seven years. These go out in an old CD case. Um, of course, people use them, wear them, get used to them, um, and after about three weeks, they return them. It was a really great program when pedometers became very popular a few years back. Um, then in 2000, January 2012, we decided that we wanted to jump on board with those libraries who um, were lending e-readers. So we purchased 30 e-readers, a mixture of Kobo Touch, Sony PSR T2, and Kobo Vox. Um, this is a fully lendable collection, and it, of course, opened the door for our iPad collection. The e-readers come uh, with preloaded titles that we select based on popularity. Um, there's a mixture of titles for all interests and ages. We f refresh these titles every six to eight months, adding about 10 to 15 new um, titles with every refresh. Um, this collection was so well received by our patrons, um, and there was little downside by way of damage or displeasure expressed by customers that we really felt we needed to be doing more. So, why iPads? <laughs> um, when Burlington Public Library began asking questions such as why does, or sorry, what does the li your library of the future hold of their customers, the response was overwhelmingly leaning towards that the, the library of the future needs to lend technology. So that was a big kickoff as to why we were lending the e-readers, but consistently our customers were saying they wanted more, they needed more. Um, and that's why we went to a tablet. Um, so late in 2012, I started doing some research into the tablet market. And as you can imagine, the iPad came out as the tablet to have. Um, in our computer classes, we also asked some questions that allowed our customers to express interest in learning about different devices and most of them wanted to learn about the iPad. Um, it's what their kids were talking about. It's what their grandkids were talking about. It's what they were hearing about on the street or seeing on TV shows or on commercials. So finally, um, the big kicker, it happened. Apple announced the iPad mini. Um, so here I was being told that the most popular tablet was the iPad. Um, it's what my customers wanted to learn about, and they were now releasing it in a format that was going to fall within my price point. So um, on top of it all, the support that comes with having an Apple product, um, not only from Apple, but that ecosystem of people that also own an Apple product um, makes the ease of comprehension for both staff and customers much better than another um, type of tablet, a, a no-name tablet, um, you could say. So really, all signs were pointing to purchasing the iPad mini as our choice for um, tablet lending. I'm sorry, I jumped ahead. So in November of 2012, um, I approached our selection team with a proposition. Um, I asked them to use some of the funds that we had left in our budgets to purchase a lending collection of iPad minis. Um, they agreed so long as our senior management team supported the collection um, that we could allocate $10,000 to the project. Uh, my report went to senior management, and they thought it was time that we would start um, holding a collection like this. So we purchased an original 30 iPad minis and have since added to this when we opened our seventh location. The collection launched on February 19th so of 2013. So that was a turnover time of five months from the time that I started my research to approval to getting these into our customers' hands. So we were actually able to 
manage doing all of that in five months, um, which I will tell you is not something typical necessarily here and at other libraries I've worked at isn't necessarily something that you can do turnaround time in. So it just went to show that working with this product was something that was quite easy. So <clears throat> the next few slides I'm going to, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going the wrong way, my gosh. The next few slides I'm going to talk to you about how this all works, um, the lending, what we do there, um, what exactly the borrower gets or maybe what they don't get, and what kinds of fines and fees um, come along with, uh, with this type of borrowing process. So our lending. This can get a bit tricky and this is where a lot of people ask me questions. Um, we have two types of ways to check out an iPad, express or regular circulation. So each of BTL's uh, locations were assigned four iPads for their express collections. So express collections can be borrowed for one week and there are no holds or extensions. The fines are also higher on these type of uh, collections. So this is the type of collection where you walk in and it happens to be on the shelf. Um, it's really great for people who don't necessarily want to wait in a line for a hold for 200 people in front of you. Um, the other 10 iPads are a floating collection which customers can place holds on. These circulate for three weeks typically, but only two weeks when there is a holds list. So it does, um, it does shorten your time with the product um, if, if there is a holds list, which with this type of um, collection there typically is a holds list. So um, we do have basic checkout and check-in procedures um, that I've listed here for you all to see and I will go through them. When the item is checked out, um, if the, you've been notified that there's a hold, your hold is uh, kept behind the desk. You just come up to the desk and tell the staff member that you have a hold for one of the iPads and they will get it for you. If you're picking one up from the express desk, what there is is the, there's a, um, a box from the iPad. We actually just use the boxes as the placeholder for the iPads um, rather than keeping them actually on the, uh, on the shelf. So they just bring the box up. We take the box and we give them an iPad. All of the iPads are kept behind the circulation desk. So when we go to check them out, we turn it on and show them it works before you left. Thus, it should work when you bring it back. We go through everything in the package, including um, the fine information that is on the uh, paperwork that they take home, um, and then perform the checkout. When it is checked in, it has to be checked in at a uh, checkout desk. Um, they cannot drop it in a Dropbox. Um, we turn it on to ensure that it works. We check for any major damage, just anything we see, ensure everything is in the package. Uh, we then check it into repair status and take it into the workroom to charge. Later when one of the clerks has a moment, they perform a um, quick little refresh uh, via the iCloud backup. Um, so this removes all customer added content, pictures, any apps they might have been adding, um, documents they might have written, anything like that. Um, and it reloads all of our pre-selected apps, ebooks, and settings. If a clerk notices any damage or that the device won't turn on, they're to notify the customer that there seems to be a problem or damage and that they will need to be assessed by our IT department. A manager will contact them regarding any associated fines. We've set it up this way to ensure that all damage can be assessed because some staff are unsure if it's just a scratch on the screen um, uh, or if it's a scratch on the screen prote uh, protector or if it's an actual crack. Um, 
Also, uh, if the device won't turn on, our IT department might be able to perform a reset of the iPad and get it to work again. So we want to make sure that we're properly assessing what the issue is with the iPad before we tell a customer, you have to pay $400 for this. So what's in the package? Um, they borrow a 16 gigabyte iPad mini. The iPads have been engraved on the back to say that they belong to Burlington Public Library. Um, of course, that could be scratched out and that sort of thing. But uh, we can also activate things like um, find my iPad to locate it via GPS if we wanted to. It also comes with a charger and charging cord, um, a magnetic cover that uh, can also be used as a little bit of a stand. Uh, we have some instruction sheets to help them get started, and um, that includes information regarding fines and fees. Um, it all, that all comes in a little carrying case that's made for a regular sized iPad, so it all fits in one of those and it's not too cumbersome. We've included a little over 50 apps, and that keeps growing as we perform uh, our, our reload process and add new books and new apps. Um, and we have over 30 ebooks on them now. So those things that are not included um, are our Apple ID information accounts for any of the apps or any extended training. People are not given access to our Apple ID account information. If they were, they could also have access to add apps using our credit card or delete apps from the backup that we use to perform our check-in process. Um, customers are more than welcome to use their own Apple ID information. Um, they can then add apps, movies, music, etc. Um, to the content that we already have. When the iPad is returned and refreshed, these pieces of content will be removed. We don't create accounts for the apps. Um, we encourage people to do that on their own, whether it be a Facebook account or an account to play cards online. Um, it really gives them the full ability to learn how to use the iPad and its apps. We liberate them to uh, encourage them to create all of these accounts um, and use their IDs where needed. Again, when it's returned, um, all of their personal information is um, wiped clean. Uh, finally, we don't provide really any extended training. We have the introduction sheets and cases to help people learn what the buttons do and how to turn it on, um, also how to touch the screen. From time to time, customers will bring up the borrowed iPad to the information desk, and we spend a bit of time showing them how to use it, and often we send them to our, uh, we have a database that has information regarding how to use, has short videos, how to use iPads and that sort of thing. Um, so we'll sit them down and, and show them how to use that database, and it introduces them to it. Um, with this collection, we encourage people to take their lifelong learning into their own hands. Similarly, uh, you know, we lend books, but I don't necessarily sit with every child to teach them how to read. So we really encourage people to embrace this and, and help themselves learn. I see here Catherine's asked, are the books the same on all the iPads, or do you have different genres on different iPads? No, all the books are the same on all the iPads. Um, what we've done is we've included a uh, vast array of books um, that are of interest to people who are interested in different genres and of different ages. So we have picture books, graphic novels, uh, teen lit, um, fiction, adult fiction, and adult nonfiction on all of them. Um, and they're typically new and hot titles. So the fines and fees, um, in, as you can see here, an overdue charge is $5 a day. Um, and 
the lost or damaged fees are listed as is. Um, the iPad is a $400 replacement value. Charger is $6, carrying case is $38, and the smart cover is $39. Um, thus far, we've only had to replace two iPads. Um, one was an accident with a staff member, and one was an accident with a customer. The customer had unfortunately held the iPad by the smart cover, the magnetic cover, um, and the magnets holding them together let go, so the front of the iPad cracked. Uh, so this was two weeks after we had started the collection, and as the damage was only to the screen, we were able to actually have it replaced for less than this $400. So um, again, it's, it's making sure that we address these issues, um, and, and so the maximum replacement value is $400. Um, we didn't have to charge the $400 to the customer in that instance. We have not had any of these stolen um, or any types of issues like that. People can use, we, we are um, subscribers to Overdrive. So, um, and also to EBSCOhost, so people could use the OverDrive or EBSCO apps that are on the iPads with their own personal accounts to download ebooks from our collection and read them. Um, they just have to use their own accounts to do that. I'm going to explain about the iCloud backup in a few moments. Sorry, let me just get back here. So let me talk a little bit about staff uh, training. So people are often concerned about staff training when you launch a um, piece of technology as a collection. Um, so we ensured that staff had some hands-on time with the iPads about two weeks before we launched the collection. The information desk staff had been using iPads to serve customers as we had integrated them as, um, at service points about a year earlier. So this wasn't the staff that we were overly concerned with. Um, the circulation staff were going to have to deal with the collection the most, so we needed to have them have some hands-on time. The trainers at the library created some introductory documents um, with some activities on them so that the staff could go through these documents, learn about the um, devices, and perform some activities to really integrate themselves into the, into the devices. The IT departments also created the instruction sheets for the refresh that they would have to perform when the devices were returned so that they could perform that and get to know what they would need to be doing with, with the iPads. The iPads were in the workrooms of our circula uh, for our circulation staff at all locations, and they were able to spend some time performing these activities or the refresh. They could also sign them out and take them home for a night to enjoy them for an evening and start to explore the capabilities of the iPad. In the end, as it turned out, staff would have liked a bit more time with the collection than we had given. So that's something that we have definitely learned um, and implemented as we've added new types of devices to our collections. So let's talk about working with Apple. We decided to work directly with the local Apple store rather than purchasing online or through a third party. The Apple store has really treated us wonderfully. I, I probably can't say enough positive about the gentleman that I've worked with at the Apple store. The concept of working with a public library um, so we could lend their product was a new idea for them, um, and it was as new for them as it was for us. They really went above and beyond understanding where we were working under time restraints and truly under funding restraints. Um, the rep I worked with uh, came up with many options for us, including things like an iPad charging station, um, one for charging and for storage, along with trying to get us set up for mass app purchasing. Not everything worked with what we were trying to do, 
but he was definitely trying to help make things easier and help make this a more, po like, the most positive experience for us. He was just as excited about this as I was, and to be truly honest about it, that was really awesome. Um, I was very excited about being able to, to do this for our customers, and he was pumped. <laughs> um, still to this day, they check in to make sure everything's going great with our products and that we know if we need anything that they're just a call away. Um, in the past, we have worked with other companies for our e-readers um, and other technology needs, but I, I mean, I have to say, there's nothing like Apple customer service, and on a personal level, I'm not even an Apple user. I don't own any Apple products, so it's been a very interesting experience for me. So I was, I had a very positive experience working with them um, for our business here. So the way it worked out for us is that we've been able to have 10 Apple devices per Apple ID. So every purchase that we've made, everything has been bought in groups of 10. Um, we started with 30 iPads and thus three IDs. We only have to purchase apps or ebooks one time per ID, and it can be shared among all devices on that ID. It took us a while to find this information, but in the end, I just called Apple, explained what I was doing, and said to them that I need to know legally how many devices can I have on one ID, and they told me. And, and can I share apps or share ebooks among those devices? And he said, absolutely. So that's all I needed to do. The iCloud backup works best for us, as devices can be checked in at any of the seven locations, we just need to have our wireless working to be able to perform that refresh process. We do this because it protects the pr privacy of customers and ensures that none of our content has been removed. The total process takes about seven minutes of staff time, but about another 20 minutes on top of that to load all the apps and the eBooks. If your apps are really big, it's going to take a longer time. I had one app that was like a golf app, and it was taking a significant amount of time just for the one app, so we removed it um, because it was just, it was cu very cumbersome. So those are some of the things you need to take into consideration. So we have three different IDs, so if one of them, if, if iPad number seven comes in, you have to use the ID for number seven. If iPad number 14 comes in, then you have to use a different ID because it's not in the first 10, it's in the second 10. So we lend 40 at this time because we purchased a, another set of 10. The original purchase was 30. We purchased another 10 for our, new, our newest branch in September. So I just want to confirm, did that cover the questions about the Apple ID? When you set it back to the iCloud backup, do you have the same information using one Apple ID, or do you have separate for each device? Sally, if you need more information, just please add it to the um, to the chat. So let me tell you about the numbers. So as you can see here, we've been lending for about nine months. We allowed holds to be placed two weeks in advance of the collection being available. We had about 195 holds before they even arrived in circulation. Um, Express, the Express collection has circulated 554 times. The regular collection, has because they circulate for a longer period of time, has circulated for uh, 122 times. As of yesterday, there was still 240 holds on the collection. One has had damage to have been replaced. So we are very pleased. We met after six months. We were extremely pleased with this collection. What have we learned? We need to give more staff time for learning. Two weeks 
felt rushed to some of the part-time circulation staff. They were unsure when the iPads started circulating and wanted to have more hands-on time when they were asked for feedback on the process as a whole. We need to communicate circulation policies very clearly to staff. There was some confusion in the beginning on the check-in and check-out processes. We now know that it's important to communicate these policies clearly and early so that the busy CERC staff are prepared to handle these new and expensive devices. It can be extremely intimidating, especially to staff who maybe don't have a lot of background using these types of devices. They need to know very clearly what they need to look for. So I needed to find more apps that don't require accounts or the internet. One comment that has come in is that customers are using these to decide what they uh, if they want to purchase one. So that's great. We're totally happy with that. Problem being is they don't have an Apple ID, and some of them don't even have home wireless. When we added new content to the account um, in September, we decided to add some apps that specifically didn't require an Apple ID or wireless to be able to use so that these people could use them at ease and find out how pleased they are with the technology. Um, because they need to know if they're comfortable with it before they go out and make all of these purchases and commit to things like an Apple ID. Um, so we found that some customers liked to remove the screen shields. Um, this was odd. <laughs> I didn't realize that it was definitely something that we weren't um, anticipating. I didn't realize customers would do this. Um, so they were removing the shields and trying to put them back on. So when we purchased the iPads for our new library in September, we decided to not put the screen shields on them. Um, and we were finding it was just kind of causing more problems than it was good. So we're going to see how that goes. So some customers will still drop them in the Dropbox, in the book drop. Um, policy states that you must hand this device to a circulation clerk to return it. If we find one in the book drop, the customer is responsible for any damage it has caused. Um, often the manager of the location where it is found in the book drop will call the customer who put it in there and explain why we ask them not to do this and request that it doesn't happen again. Thankfully, it hasn't caused any damage yet. This has only happened a couple of times. Typically, they say they're in such a rush, they can't wait until we open. I get it, but rules are rules, and we would prefer that these don't get broken. So regular customers have become repeat users of the collection. We really like this. Many regular customers have discovered these on our Express collection, and as they see them sitting there, they like to pick them up. Um, they think it's great, and they keep coming back for more. So it's really nice. We've been able to help people embrace their lifelong learning. So finally, people love it. Uh, the positive p comments keep flowing in. People think this is great, um, that they have the opportunity to learn about iPads. Uh, finally, they understand what the grandkids are talking about. Um, they can borrow it for vacation. Honestly, the list goes on and on. So what's, what's going to happen next? What now? Um, we will continue to add to the e-device collections. We recently started a LeapPad Ultra collection, um, lending LeapPads, which are children's tablets. We purchased nine of these, and the collection started this month. Um, now a permanent part of our collection budget, e-devices um, has its own budget line. Um, we will leave it up to the selector to decide what devices we should add. Um, it's no longer a recommendation to senior management. Uh, it doesn't have to go through that big of a process. Um, everybody recognizes that this is needed. It needs to grow and expand. Um, we take recommendations from customers. Uh, we've even gotten app recommendations from customers of what kinds of apps to add to, to the app uh, collection on the iPads. So it's fully functioning as a collection. 
So customers can't get enough of the technology learning and continue to ask us for more. Comments still come in asking for more technology and more devices to borrow. All of this will be taken into consideration as the collection grows. So this was a huge step for us at BPL as the first public library in Canada to lend iPads en masse. Um, it was amazing for us as we were able to truly embrace lifelong learning and um, 21st century literacy development. So that is something that we fully wholeheartedly stand by here at BPL. Um, so we were extremely pleased. Now, let's talk questions. That's all I have. <laughs> Um, Heather, Jamie, we missed a few questions earlier on. One was, do you lend any Windows or Android tablets? I'm sorry, I'm just going to turn up the sound here a little bit. I'm sorry, lend any Windows or iPad app? I, 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 any, sorry. sorry, any Windows or Android Windows tablet? Windows or Android? Not yet. Not yet. Um, we have definitely been investigating some Android devices. We know that the Android market is growing significantly, and some believe it has taken over the market um, past and surpassed Apple's uh, hold. So um, one of my recommendations to the selector is to investigate um, one of the Google tablets because the way I see it is because Google owns Android, it would be positive to recommend a Google product because Google will probably create the best um, OS for its own product. Was there anything else? Um, Karen had asked, what were the most useful apps? Do you keep track of the most useful apps? And um, do you have a list of the apps that you use? Um, useful? Uh, I would say we don't necessarily have a, a most useful app. Um, what we do is provide a vast array of apps for all interest levels and all reasons. We want people to be able to experience what is available to them. So that could be anything from a social media app to a business app to a travel app to a, a a video game of sorts app to potentially maybe a, a educational app for their children. Um, we did some research. There w uh, was a library in the States. <laughs> I wish I could tell you their name off the top of my head. I'm sitting in an empty room right now, so I don't have any of my paperwork, who had an amazing extremely comprehensive list of the apps that they provide on their iPads. Um, if you email me and you want the list of what we provide, I can tell you. Um, we keep adding to it based on what customers like. Um, what I did is I took the list that I had found from the library that I had checked in with to do my research. On top of that, I asked people. I asked customers. I asked um, our pages, our student pages. What's your favorite app? Um, because I wanted things that people use and people like, not just things that maybe I, I like. Yeah, Karen Let's here. Asked. Please explain further on these IDs. Oh. Sorry? Oh, Karen had asked to uh, what type of case you use, if it's a hard case, to protect it when it does go in the book drop. Yeah, it's not a hard case. Um, it has like a vinyl on the outside, and then it's quite squishy and thick um, inside the vinyl. Um, yeah, it's just a carrying case, really. Um, the hard cases were extremely expensive. Um, so it's kind of in between. 
I can't hear very well. Just a second. I'm going to try to turn my volume up. Okay. Okay. So please explain further on IDs. So for an Apple product, you have to create an Apple ID. So this is kind of like registering your Apple product with, um, uh, with Apple, your, yourself using that product. So if you ever want to download an app, or um, a song, or a movie, or a book, you would do it through um, the iStore, or iTunes, or iBooks, or any of those things. Um, and you have to do it using your Apple ID. So Apple has realized that many people use many um, products. So you can register up to 10 products, mobile products, on one Apple ID. So it's kind of like having one account for all of your 10 products. So you might have an iPhone, an iPad, and an iPod, say. And you want to have all the same music on all three of those things. So you buy, you know, um, one song. And of course, I can't think of a song off the top of my head right now uh, that's appropriate. So <laughs> um, you buy one song from iTunes. Well, you don't want to have to buy it three times because you're the only one. Per you're the only person using these three things. So you have to buy it once using your Apple ID, and you're able to put it on all three of those products because all three of those pro products are registered to the same ID. So for us, we buy one book, and we're able to put it on 10 products because you're allowed to have up to 10 products on one ID. Linda, does that make things more clear regarding the IDs? I hope. Can you have iPad apps that are OK to share on the 10 devices? Yes, so that's what I'm saying here. We buy an app. Most of our apps are free, I'm going to be really honest. Most of the apps we find are free. Um, so you, you per but even if you purchase it, you purchase it once. And anything up to 10 mobile devices that are registered under that ID can go, can, it can share that app. OK, so it can go on to anything that is under that ID up to 10 devices. So we now have, because we have 40 devices, we now have four IDs. We have to purchase everything four times. Does that clarify IDs, purchasing, and sharing of books and apps for people? Heather, there's been quite a few people ask if you have any advice for lending iPads to kids in school. Oh. Oh. OK. Um, OK. I, um, I've talked to a couple of people about this. Um, and I know, like, are we talking really little kids? Um, we do not lend them to a person with a children's card. It has to go out on a teen or adult card. Um, I would say if you're lending them to little kids, See, this is why we bought the Leap Pads, because we wanted to have something that was built for kids, um, which is what a, a, a Leap Pad does. 
it's completely built for kids. Um, if you're talking teens, then I think that it's appropriate to lend them as a regular collection, um, potentially for like a day or two. Um, little kids, you need to be very careful about the content you're loading onto, you're preloading onto them. You need to make sure that if they're taking them home, that parents are aware there needs to be liability there. Um, you need to make sure you have something like an otter box for the case because these are like the cases, like the, the iPad is glass. The front of it is glass. Um, so you need to be careful with that. Um, it's a difficult question. It's very difficult. I would, before you go out and purchase a bunch of iPads, I would investigate other resources that are potentially built for little kids. If you're talking kids in, in classrooms and they're working on them, um, you know, kids in grade five, that kind of thing, I think that's totally appropriate. I think it's very important that kids of that age are, are developing that kind of knowledge. But there needs to be some waivers signed, and you need to be careful about the content on them. We've also had some questions about how you protect the settings on the account. You had mentioned that one of the things that you block are the Apple ID and the account settings. How do you do that? Um, you mentioned, uh, is this the, it says here you mentioned you can use their own Apple ID to download apps to make, is that what you're asking me? Sorry. It cut in a little bit when well, you there is something. that question. Can they use their own Apple ID? But then also, how do you protect the library's Apple ID and credit card information from being used by the patrons? Okay. Okay. So um, they can't, like we just, uh, you have to input your Apple ID anytime you try to download something. So um, they can try to download anything they want, but they don't know our Apple ID. So they can't do anything. Um, so that's how we protect it. We just don't tell them. <laughs> um, and then it says here, you mentioned you can use your own Apple ID, or people can use their own Apple ID. Yeah. So they can go into um, one of the general settings and input their own Apple ID information. And so what that does is it doesn't wipe our downloads, so it doesn't wipe out our apps, it doesn't wipe out our books, it just inputs their information and then when they go to um, download something, it asks for their ID and their password and, um, and they have to input their ID, their password, and it will connect with the general settings that they've put in. Um, so we have this printed out at our information desks. We've given it to our circulation clerks. Um, it was just, uh, we just Googled it and found it on Apple, um, on the Apple Help website and found that we can do this. So, was there anything else? Okay. Oh. Access to general settings. They can still access it. Yeah, they can still access the general settings, totally. It does. Um, when you, we do the refresh, it, it wipes out all content and settings. Um, and we log into our iCloud account, um, and it reloads all our stuff. Um, if you go to our website, bpl.on.ca, and type in iPad Mini in the, in the um, 
in the collection search, you'll see, um, well, our fines and fees is just on our fines and fees site. But if you type in iPad mini in the collection, it explains everything about the iPads right in the, um, the entry in the uh, catalog. Heather, there were a couple of questions, too, about basic instructions for patrons, written instructions. And I think you said something at the beginning about you include a basic sheet of instructions about using the iPads. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. Yep. Um, I sat down with our marketing team and just created a, this is how you touch it, this is how you turn it on, this is where the speaker is, kind of basics. Um, and they are very much that, basics. Um, so we very much encourage our customers to um, find their own way. Uh, there have been a couple of customers who bring their borrowed iPad up to our information desks, and we will help them. We also have a database. It's called Atomic Training. Um, it has many um, learning videos for many different types of technologies, including iPads. So if they want to learn more about it, we'll set them up for, um, uh, we will set them up for uh, the ability to sit down and watch some of the different uh, tutorials and learn about the iPad. Um, but we, like, we'll just show them a few things at the desk, but we try to, and answer their specific questions if they have specific questions, but we don't do like a one-on-one -on -one training with them or anything like that regarding our iPads. Um, are you able to, oh, sorry. Do you have mounted iPads in the library for in-house use? No, actually. Uh, do you mean like for searching the catalog or for general, hey, I'd like to sit down and use an iPad use, Jennifer. I don't have any mounted iPads, but I'd like to give you more information. <laughs> um, can I share my refresh iCloud procedure? You know what? You send me an email and I can share lots. I don't have it right here with me to send out, unfortunately. For general use, no. Um, we considered having just in-house use iPads. I know there are many places that are really concerned about um, uh, security and um, making sure that iPads come back. <laughs> so there are places that use them for just in-house uh, borrowing. We went all out and let people borrow them. So that's why we did the express collection of them. I think a m mounted in the youth room would be a really cool idea. We've considered uh, mounting one in, we had listening stations and we've considered mounting one because we use Freegal and letting people download using Freegal right on our iPad and listening rather than, um, rather than having a listening station with CDs in it, so. Um, um, yeah, so we're putting four iPads in our children. So, yeah, I think that's about it, guys. If you have any more questions, please feel free to email me. I really appreciate you coming out and listening. And thank you to Amy for being our moderator. She's been great. So that's all, folks. <laughs> and um, I can't stop the recording until everybody logs out. So thanks, guys. <laughs>